Welcome back to the Wandering Star Farmhouse. My name is Jeanette. I'm glad you're here today and we hatched some chicks. So I'm really excited about these chicks that we just got done hatching. We had 100% hatch rate, which is awesome. So we got seven chicks and we used this, the Brincy Mini 2 Advanced Incubator, and this is our third time using it. So I was gonna share with you a little bit about the machine, how to use it, and show you the process of hatching out these little fluff balls. But first I'm gonna go get these chicks back under their heat lamp. These chicks that we hatched out are Delawares, and they are a mixed meat bird, laying hen, and it is the variety that they use at the seasonal homestead. And so we wanted to give them a try this year. Brincy is a high quality European brand. And I really liked that they had a small incubator. That seemed like the size that we wanted. They do have bigger incubators also. This incubator size will do seven chicken eggs or seven duck eggs with the included disc. Now we did end up buying another disc as well. And this is the size for pheasant eggs and for quail eggs. And I have a video I'll link to of us hatching quails a couple of years ago when we were living in the city. A smaller incubator allowed us to keep it more within the budget that we needed it to be. Although we did not choose the cheapest version. There is one version that is cheaper than this one, but this one has right here, this little gear shaft and what it does, it locks in with the teeth of the egg tray. And so then it will automatically turn the eggs. Another great feature of this neat little machine is this port right here on the outside. And this is actually a water port where you pour water in. There's a hose underneath that takes the water inside. So then you don't have to open up the incubator to add more water. That helps the humidity stay stable. And the more things you, you can keep stable in this process, the more likely you are to have good outcomes. Where the water comes in inside from the hose, you can see is on this side of this little divider wall here. Now, when you're incubating the eggs at the beginning, you're only gonna keep this side full. And there's a little line, the filling side, that shows you how high to fill it. You don't fill it above that height for the first bit of your incubation period. But in the last couple days of your incubation period, when the eggs actually gonna start hatching, then you fill it till that overflows into the second chamber, and then you'll get the higher humidity that you need for hatching time. First, we collected our fertile eggs to hatch. We needed seven, and the Delawares have definitely been slowing down as the daylight is getting less and less every day. So it took us about three days to collect seven eggs. Also, it, they have to be seven clean eggs. You don't want eggs that are like covered in poop or something. They really need to be relatively, relatively clean eggs for the hatching process. One thing I actually didn't do that you're supposed to do, but um, I think it was okay because we jostled the eggs around anyways, is if you're going to be storing them for a couple days, you just turn them. You can just turn them once a day to make sure they're just not settling too much to one side. But like I say, I didn't really do that. We kind of moved eggs around every day as I was collecting the other ones, but it all worked out fine. Next step is to set up your incubator and get it all warmed up before you put the eggs in so that everything can be really consistent for the chicks. So that just slides on there. And then, like I say, there's this gear inside. It connects with the teeth of the egg tray and it will automatically turn it. At this point, you can put in this cover for the water pot. I was going to put mine in when I put the chicks on lockdown, but I actually ended up forgetting to. So it's a good idea to just put it in right from the start. And this keeps chicks from falling into the water and drowning themselves. So I'm going to show you. It's a really simple to get all the settings. This is a fully automatic incubator. And so you don't have to change or mess with anything along the way. And that's something that's really nice about it. So here on the top, it is listing what the current temperature is, 69 degrees. You press the plus and minus button at the same time and that unlocks it and it gets you to the first category, which is incubation temperature. It might show up automatically in Celsius and if you wanna change it to Fahrenheit, that's gonna be actually the very last thing on this menu. If you wanna change it, you push, either you push the plus or the minus and, and you can change the temperature. And then when you're done in that menu item, then you click OK and it takes you to the next menu item. The next menu item is remaining days. And for chickens, it's automatically set for 21. But like, for example, the quail, I think the quail is only 18. And then press OK. The next menu item is turning mode. And like I say, the great thing about this one is that it has an automatic turner. 
So for the, t the turning mode, you can switch it to on or off or auto. And the auto is going to be on for most of the time, but then it is going to turn, is going to stop turning for the last two days of the incubation period. Click OK to go to the next menu item, which is the turning interval. And that sets how much time between turns. It was set automatically for 45 minutes for chicken eggs, and that's what we left it at. Click OK to go to the next menu item, which is the turning angle. What you want is for the egg to turn at least 90 degrees each time it turns. They have this chart in the manual so you can see what size your eggs are. And that says basically, if you set it for the number of seconds that you want the motor to spin. And that is gonna push the eggs this way. And so the eggs are gonna turn as the disc, tur as the disc pushes one direction. And you wanna make sure that the eggs are turning at least 90 degrees. So you can maybe like watch that the first couple times you do it. This should get this chart should give you a good idea and then you watch it the first couple times the default was like five or seven seconds and and we turned ours all the way up to eight that's how big it was on our chicken eggs and we watched them turn a couple times to make sure that they were turning as far as they needed to the next two menu items are the high and low temperature alarms. You can have it make an alarm go off if the if the temperature changes. Now you really do want to keep this, especially the smaller units, you want to keep them in a room that's generally pretty stable in temperature. You don't want to keep them in a room that's like right by the door or something that's going to be opening and closing and have big temperature fluctuations all the time. But then you can set these alarms to let you know if there is, if for some reason the temperature is out of range for more than an hour because it is okay for the eggs to be out of temperature, especially below temperature for a little period of time, because it's not uncommon for the mom to get up, for the hen to get up and go get a drink of water and some food for a little bit every day and leave those eggs out um, to a lower temperature than when she's setting them. And so along with that, the next setting is actually a setting where you can set it to periodic cooling if you wanna try that. I have never tried using that and maybe something you want to try. Then like I said, the last menu item is switching between Fahrenheit and Celsius, whichever one you prefer, and then click OK to save it and save your changes and you're back to the regular display. Now there's a couple things I'll show you about the display. So when the settings are set to automatic to be turning the eggs, you see this backslash that looks like it's spinning in a circle to tell you that it is spinning. And then when it switches to off, you will see that there's a, an O in the corner for off. The eggs are not turning. If for some reason the unit loses power, that's what this flashing P can let you know that there was a power outage and there may be consequences to your hatch rate because of that. We did candle our eggs a couple of times while we were waiting for them to hatch. One, the first time was around like seven or eight days. I think the second time we candled our eggs was around 10 or 12 days and it was amazing because we could see the tiny little chick developing inside and you can see it moving around and you see the veins in there and life is just fascinating and miraculous. We candled the eggs again just one more time as we were putting the eggs in for the final hatching. They were taking up most of the space, but we could still see movement in there. And that was pretty amazing. And I was pretty sure that I could see that they, they all looked like they were progressing and developing and, and fertile the whole time. And ultimately they, they did all hatch. So that was very exciting. So two days before hatch day, you need to remove the egg tray and you're going to lay the eggs just in there on a hatching mat. Now, Brincy sells hatching, like the, the machine comes with a hatching mat and then they sell replacement hatching mats. But basically all it is, is corrugated cardboard. I just traced the egg tray and cut out from corrugated cardboard, a new disc to put in this time. And I pulled the top layer off the corrugated cardboard because what you want is those that bumpy layer to be up. Now this is important because the chicks need something sturdy to stand, to stand on. The cardboard is going to absorb a lot of moisture but it's still going to get really wet and, and sticky in there and so this way the chicks can grip on with their little toes and they won't be um, chicks can get a splayed leg, splayed legs if they are on a smooth surface when they are little. After using the incubator, it's a good idea to wash some of these pieces. These can be put in water and this top piece, you can see there's all kinds of 
feathers and things in here, little little fluff and stuff. So this fan guard is actually removable. So this cover removes and I'm gonna wash that cover. But you have to be careful when you take this cover off because this is just sitting in here. They sell a special disinfecting solution, but I'm just gonna wash it with warm soapy water. It's a good idea to wash it in between hatching so you don't have any crazy bacteria that gets growing because the moist, humid environment of an incubator is a great environment for incubating all sorts of living organisms. is a fascinating process to watch. The chicks start by pipping a little hole in the shell and then they kind of take a break and rest for a couple of hours and then they will zip their shell which is to they, they start from that pip and they kind of turn their head in a line and peck in a line along it and then it kind of makes this flap that they can then push out from the bottom of their egg and the, the top flips backwards because of how they've zipped it open. And then they push and struggle and push and struggle until they finally emerge. And the crazy thing is like the little chicks, once they're out, they kind of flop around quite a bit, but then the first one starts to get sturdier and steadier on their feet and they start walking all over everybody. And they're stepping on the chicks as they're trying to hatch the other chicks. <laughs> you think, this is crazy. Why am I letting them do this? But it seems like it's not enough space. But if you think about this whole process happening like underneath a setting chicken, well, it, you know, it seems like, in fact, there is plenty of space. There's just as much space as there would be underneath a, underneath a chicken in a nest like that. But it's pretty funny to watch their antics and they, they come out looking like a creature from the Blue Lagoon. Then as their feathers start to dry, they fluff up and they become these cute little power puffs.
I'll put a link down to this incubator in the description if you want to take a look at it on Amazon. Being able to hatch our own replacement chicks is a big deal for us because chicks are getting more and more expensive every year. I remember back when we first started raising chickens, you could get chicks for just a couple dollars and now they're they're five to ten dollars depending on the breed that you want. So it really helps our homestead to be more sustainable if we can hatch our own replacement chicks. So we are really excited about this. Thanks for spending a little bit of time with me today at the farmhouse and I'll see you next time.